Absolutely, the nature of change is accelerating. I mean, look at what happened during the 19th and 18th century compared to what's happened in the 20th century. Life is more complex in many ways. There's more things to think about. There's more, you can go into more level of detail. It just seems that we can't keep up with the technological changes. So we become confused. Its footprints are everywhere. From revolutions in far-off lands to the sometimes subtle revolutions seen here at home. From the marketplace to the workplace, in every facet of our lives, we're witnessing unprecedented change. And that is the focus of this new program, Fast Forward, a program that explores and defines the nature of change in our lives. Each week, Fast Forward looks at the issues, trends, and new ideas in business, technology, information, lifestyles, and society, and presents the stories that will shape our future, such as stories on powerful new technology. To defend themselves against Iraqi troops and to locate the enemy in the darkness of the desert, American soldiers relied on infrared technology that gave them night vision. They could see what we normally can only feel as heat, infrared radiation. Stories on living in an ever-changing world. People are concerned about the air they breathe, the water they drink, and whether or not the planet has a future. They're also very concerned about things like visual and noise pollution. Stories on entertainment in the future, plus a host of fascinating topics including interactive computers, energy-saving cars, robotic manufacturing, the weapons of tomorrow, telecommunications, advertising and marketing, as well as social issues and trends like our aging society, the evolution of our cities, and the environment. Hosted by Joe Capo, a noted author on the future and the publisher of Advertising Age, our pilot program begins with a story that looks at the marketing images of the future with an emphasis on three technologies transforming our visual landscape, video, lasers, and holography. And here are some excerpts from this program. Video special effects. Most people don't know that this is a two billion dollar industry, but most have seen these fantastic effects in commercials and TV specials. The artists who create these visual marvels are high-tech wizards who manipulate images on equipment worth millions of dollars. Phil Price, director of graphics at Limelight Video. With this new technology, I can create anything. I can also destroy anything. <laughs> Another emerging marketing tool is the laser. Originally developed for the military, the laser is now finding its way into mainstream marketing. This display atop the Citicorp building in Manhattan was controlled entirely by a computer using a sophisticated CAD software program. Dick Sandhouse, president of Science Faction. We have so many instructions, so much information to be conveyed to the devices that move the laser beam and produce our shows or our spectacles that, I mean, you'd literally need 80 pairs of hands somehow all synchronized to get what it is that we want. It's, it's really not humanly possible. Eerie, ghost-like, stunningly real, words that aptly describe the hologram, a three-dimensional image created with laser light. These magical images hold great promise for the future, especially in the realm of television, where one day three-dimensional characters and products may literally emerge from the screen. Ron Erickson from the Museum of Holography. We will ultimately see something that will be called, in retrospect, holographic movies and holographic television. It will look like nothing we've ever experienced before. Following this story, we return to the studio where Joe Capo discusses the future of images with Jack Trout and Jerry Ciano, two experts in the field of advertising media. But in the old 
tradition of advertising, uh, which still exists to some extent. The client and sometimes the agency feels that you put the name of the client there. You want it somewhere. If it's a tennis player, he's got uh, you know somebody's logo on his sleeve, for example. That there's a value to that, and that's the way clients or advertising agencies feel about it. Are, are you telling me that you don't think there's value to that? Not much. I mean, McDonald's on some tennis player's sleeve. I mean, what is that come? I know McDonald's. That's a 99% brand name. Are you trying to make people more aware of a name called McDonald's? I just don't see any real value in much of this just hang a name out there. See, that's not an idea. That's just a name. Well, Jerry, well, how do you feel about that, that? Well, not only that, it's McDonald's here, and it's uh, Nike here, and it's, uh, <laughs> you know, someone else here, and, and that's it. I mean, these guys are starting to look like the, the racing cars. You ever see a racing right. car? If you can tell me which sponsor is sponsoring this racing car, let me know. The second story in our pilot profiles a forward-thinking personality, British-born actor, comedian John Cleese, an innovator in business communications who's using humor to change behavior. Once you're into changing behavior, the thing's got to have an emotional persuasion about it, and that only comes from either drama or humor, from involving the audience. As the founder of Video Arts, now a leading producer of corporate training videos, John Cleese is using his unconventional sense of humor to challenge traditional management philosophy. You see, my marriage is ideal, my career brilliant, my personal relationships endlessly rewarding, I've never been depressed in my life, and my doctors just told me that I'm immortal. So, uh, please do tell me about these uh, so-called problems that um, unsuccessful human beings like you have, but uh, do bear with me if I laugh. It's so simple. Uh, I think probably the greatest single thought is that people somehow think that things don't change. Well, the Buddhists have got it right. Everything changes all the time. Therefore, the moment that you sit back and you think you've cracked it and you know it all, that's the moment you're in real danger. Now, it seems to me now that American business is looking around and saying, hey, you know, we're falling behind, the Japanese are way ahead. They're going to be fine now that they've realized that. Their problem came in the 50s when they were doing so well economically, they thought they knew it all. Mm -hmm. So they stopped learning. From advances in technology to fascinating profiles of cutting edge personalities, Fast Forward prepares us for the future like no other show. In seeking the trends and exploring the issues, this one-of-a-kind series captures the essence of escalating change and allows us to carefully reassess where we've been and where we're going. When we do that, we realize that the future is not cast in stone. It's not preordained. It's determined day by day by the actions or the inactions that we take, both as a society and as individuals. And by looking at where we might be heading, by seeing where the trends indicate that we're going, we can take appropriate action to find ourselves where we want to find ourselves, anywhere from tomorrow to 50 years into the future. For non-stop fascination, for a vision of the future, for excellence in programming, this half-hour weekly series, Fast Forward, defining the nature of change. Watch Fast Forward. It's an excellent, exciting, and most interesting new show. And if you don't watch it, you will go to hell.